All right, today's education session is about eccentric training for tendons and conditioning. And I'm gonna give you a couple of examples, one for the knee and the quads, and one for the shoulder. Now, I'm gonna go through the shoulder specifically because I am doing eccentrics in my program when I'm recovering from my shoulder injury because I'm in week 11 and 12, so I'm allowed to start some eccentrics on certain exercises. Now, I'll give you a rundown. Eccentrics, like, listen, with shoulder, we tend to use bands, and they're for usually tendons, but you can use them for muscle as well, but usually for tendons that you are either recovering from a significant injury or surgery, and the actual concentric phase is either too much, too much load, or you want that specific recovery phase in between every single rep. Now, when you're doing normal training, like muscle training, they're sometimes called negatives. So like in a bench press, you might do a negative rep and then get assistance to come up. That's the same thing. So you're just training on the way down, I say on a bench press, with eccentrics, say for the shoulder, say I'm using a band, say I'm doing eccentric um, external rotation, it's only on the lengthening phase, not the shortening phase. So when you're doing external rotation like that, that's the concentric phase. So around there, I'm shortening when I go outwards. So the muscle's getting relatively stronger because of the leverage is changing when I go from here to here. So that's that concentric phase, the shortening phase. All right? Now, eccentric is therefore only training that part there. So when that muscle lengthens. So you're gonna start in a short and strong position where the joint is static, and then you're gonna slowly move through where the actual muscle lengthens out and sort of slowly lets go if you like. So if I do this on my injured shoulder, if I do eccentric concentric like that, uh, sorry, concentric work like that, it's gonna be too much. So I can do one or two, but I don't want to be doing 30 every single day because my tendon is A, not strong enough, and B, it's had surgery. So I, there's a point where I haven't, I've still got another week or so for some proper healing. Now this is all theoretical and there's hardly any studies done on it, but I want to know that my tendon has had 12 weeks of being meshed into bone with healing before I start loading up and going nuts. So I can put some load in it, by doing eccentric, which is safe, okay? So it's almost like half the load, I'm putting half the amount in. So to get it out there, you just use your other hand. So I'm gonna go from here and pull that out, so this is not doing anything. Then I get in the right position, in the right posture, where it's shortened and the joint's not moving now. Now I put the load on and there's the tension on, so it's turned on, that muscle's turned on. Then all I do is simply go from 100% down to zero. So instead of going outwards where it goes harder and harder and harder and harder, every rep is easier through range. So it's kind of the worst or the, the most amount of load is when you start, but you're static like an isometric. So it's safe, okay? I'm not sort of hauling outwards all the time. And if you think of that tendon where it's coming into the bone, where I've had it reattached and you know, anchored in with, what, with nylon wires, is I don't want the muscle yanking on it all the time when that potentially has still got a little bit more time to heal, okay? Plus, the tendon from the bone to the muscle is weak. It's got a tendinopathy in it. It's been doing nothing for 12 weeks, if you like, okay? And it's had trauma. So I've still got to build that up as well. If I do concentric, no matter how much strength I've got in the bone part, it's gonna to fatigue it too much, it's gonna to get too sore. So the eccentric is not just about safety and surgery, it's also about how weak are you. So sometimes you might have a tendon tear in there or it's just weak from an injury, and all you can manage is eccentrics. And it's a good little segue from going, I'm doing isometrics, to then how do I then start doing band work or weights? So that's that halfway point. Think of an, an eccentric as halfway between just doing static work to fully loading up or doing just active movement with my arm to it. How do I put load onto it? Well, this is the best way to do it. And trust me, this stuff works, but you only need to do it for maybe two, three, four weeks before you load into normal stuff because over then you should, you should have bridged from active movement through being able to strengthen properly. It's that nice little bridge. Rather than just sort of waiting and healing, 
and then trying to jump. So that's this eccentric external rotation is what I am doing over the last two weeks. So I'm in week 12 now, so I've got to finish off this week, then I'll be in 13, then I'll be doing a lot more fun things. So that's external rotation. Another example is abduction. Now, I'm not doing that this week, that's next week, but I'll show you a couple. Because next week I click into week 13 and that's when I really start strengthening properly and away we go. Now the abduction part is you pull it out, hold it there, and lower down. Now the leverages are changed. I've got a long lever, I'm directly out in that plane, so I'm not going through sort of this transverse plane, I'm going through a frontal plane. There's a lot more demand on my supraspinatus going in this direction, okay? It's a lot easier to go in flexion, external rotation than it is abduction at this point in time. So that's why I'm not doing it next week. This week, I'm doing it next week. But what I would be doing is coming out, probably just only going to about 60 degrees, letting it go, and then coming down, okay? So the, again, the same sort of thing, easy when you come out, the most amount of load is there, then as it lowers down, it gets less and less and less and less, so it's kind on that tendon. So there's your two for shoulder. Now, for your knee, here's an example. So I'm gonna choose pistol squats, because they're hard, and listen, I've been off training for 12 weeks with legs. I've been doing a few things here and there, but pistol squats, I haven't been doing much. And I've got weaker. Now, I've also got an ACL recon, so I have to constantly work on things like pistol squats to get me going. Now, when you're deconditioned or you're recovering from something like an ACL, to do a full pistol squat is really hard. So this is also a good segue into going, how do I actually get to do pistol squats? So it's one-legged squats all the way down. And if I've been injured or I've got a sore tendon, like a quadriceps tendon or a patella tendonitis or tendinopathy, how do I get that tendon stronger from doing just free squats like this or single leg squats to then doing loaded stuff? It's, it's a nice little bridge and that's a pistol squat. So what I suggest you do, if you can't do a pistol squat, use something like a Swiss ball. Now I've just got this on a, <coughs> excuse me, a riser, just so it doesn't move. So what you do, and this is high, so this is sort of think of doing, I'm going to do the eccentric phase of a pistol squat only about sort of half, if you like. So if I go into one leg and go into pistol squat, I can go down these eccentric phase and then rest and come up. So you notice I actually get a rest at the bottom, but I also get to push up with two. So I don't have to do the concentric phase part. I don't have to go and strengthen up like that and power through from a weakened position I'm going from a strong position down to a weakened position, but then I can stop and then reset. So from here, it is simply down slowly, control it, and enter there. Now the good thing about this is, because you, you know something's behind you that you can actually rest on, you can slow things down and control it knowing you can just fall onto that ball. But the idea is to not crash onto the ball. So you don't want to just go down and, and do that, okay? Bit pointless. You want to work on the control, and how slow down you can work that. So from here, you want to go down and try and slow it down as much as you can and then really soft landing through that. Now once you've got that on both legs, then you just, just go lower. So something like this, a box. So if you go here, now I think, okay, this is much lower. This is like a really low chair. And you know, if you haven't got the strength to come up from that position, this is a good idea. So again, one leg, down you go. Soft landing, come back up again, okay? Now this is important for my ACL, but the interesting thing about my legs, and this, you might have this as well, is I've got an ACL recon on my right. However, it's actually stronger in a pistol squat than my good leg, or I should say non-surgical leg. Now my non-surgical leg is my left. I'm a left footer, I'm a left kicker. So my right leg is actually strong to stand. That's just a natural thing for me. Left footers usually stand on their right. Right footers stand on their left. So when you are doing a one leg squat, I'll show you on my left. When I'm doing this, it's actually harder. And you can see I drop harder with that. So there's a point there where I'm not as strong as my right hand side, right at the bottom there, where I'm in that outer range of my quadriceps and patella tendon, that outer weaker range. Okay, so I'm gonna need to work on that. So making sure you're working not just on once on your, you know, surgical or bad leg, just work on both and try and get them even, 
okay? And um, the other thing about that is I've got a bit of, you know, that contributes to that. My left glute is not as strong, and my patella surface is a bit rough on my left because I'm getting older. So my right one, even though my quad is not as good as my left, I've still got a better pistol spot. So it's not just about your quads, it's also about other biomechanics. Could be your glutes, could be your kneecap, could be your hammies, could be a lot of things. But you're aiming to get all those components right and that pistol squat nice and even. Now, last one. If you find you get to that point but you want to go deeper but you still can't do a pistol squat by yourself, use a suspension trainer. So, something like this, doesn't have to be a TRX, but these are great. What you do is you use this for safety, okay? So when you're standing on one leg, you try and not hold on to the straps. So try and not hold on to this, and you're slowly going to go down, very slowly. Then when you get to the point, you hold on to the straps and put that leg down, all right? So you'll have to practice this quite a bit to work out how low you can go before you can grab on. And as you get better at it, you also get stronger and a little bit more sort of activated through there. And you'll find that some of the fear goes away. And part of this is actually fear. As part of this is, will I fall over and crash? And that's why you hold yourself back. So having something like this takes away some of that fear. So when you go from this position, try not to hold on, don't hold on, don't hold on, don't hold on, don't grab, push, pull up, okay? So. If those things work for you, great. Have a shot at that. If you've got knee problems, you've got shoulder problems, you're in that phase between I'm just doing active movement or I'm injured and I need to bridge that gap to try and get normal training, try and work on some eccentrics. See how you go.